Craig, thank you, as always, uh, for joining us on a beautiful Monday afternoon. Um, today, we are going to be covering some video gadgets and gear and talking about uh, all of the lovely mistakes that we have made along the way when it comes to purchasing um, video gear that is maybe not necessary, uh, um, as well as some of the things that we have found that are really standout, um, that perform well, that are uh, reasonably inexpensive, um, all that sort of stuff that uh, that you can get into and start looking for when you're interested or if you're interested in producing video. Um, Derek saying hello from the Twin Cities. It is great to see you, Derek. Love it. I love it. Good to see you, buddy. All right. Well, let's um let's dive on in and start talking about uh, video today. Before I do that, though, um, I do want to mention the two groups. These are brought to you by. Uh, first of all, the Real Estate Technology Institute. My good friend Craig is the founder there. I'm also an instructor. Uh, it is an amazing, amazing um, place where you can get all sorts of training when it comes to uh, anything to do with technology, marketing, um, that field of play uh, in the industry. There are some amazing instructors uh, who are with there are thousands of videos from a bunch of different amazing instructors, myself being one of them. Craig, obviously, being one of them and a number of others who are also stellar. So check out reti.us. Uh, the other one to check out is serviceforlife.com. Um, that is if you're interested in growing a referral or a repeat-based business where 100% of your business is coming from repeat and referral customers, uh, check out Service for Life. It has been proven to work for agents for years and years and years. And actually, Derek, who is in here with us, uh, uses it and it works well for him. So um, awesome. All right. Well, let's dive on in. Um, and we're going to talk about, as we said, video gadgets and gear. And, uh, you know, Craig, let me ask you, you've, you've purchased some stuff over the years that you wish you hadn't, right? Oh yeah. I've, I've, that's the joke of this session is we've spent the money so you don't have to, cause we've already made, I don't want to call them mistakes, but I mean, stuff like video tools. I mean, that stuff evolves and changes all the time. So absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it updates consistently and there are things that definitely work better investments versus others um, when it comes to that. So you want to dive right on in and, and get started here? Sure. And let's talk a little bit about cameras, um, because, yep. you know, there are a few things when it comes to creating good video, um, and they are video quality um, of the actual original video that is shot. Uh, usually that has a lot to do with lighting. And then yep. the third is good audio. So yep. if you can handle those three core components, um, good video quality, good lighting, and good audio, you are on the path to creating great video. Now, there's a lot of... I'll throw, I'll throw in one other item. Yeah, go ahead, Greg. One other item that I always throw in, because I always say there's a few things consumers don't put up with with the video. Yep. And you nail three of the four I usually give. The other one is stabilization, the shakiness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd put that in good video quality. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that, but it's just, yeah. I mean, that Blair Witch effect, people flat out hate it. So yeah, we're going to uh, uh, Selfie that's cool. doing this and you're all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's people, um, and, and reality is, think about what you don't like in a video. Um, those are a lot of times what folks don't want to be seeing is a lot of movement like that, like you said, Craig. So tough video quality in general. Um, folks, bad lighting. Uh, something fo folks don't put up with bad audio is something folks tend not to put up with. So what we're going to do today is just talk about some of the gadgets and gear and tools that we use um, that we, uh, you know, have found that have worked very well um, or not, and uh, hopefully save you some money along the way. So, all right. So, Craig, first one we're going to get into here is cameras. Now, you and I have both over the years spent a lot of money on different cameras to do different things. Um, and I know for myself, it's kind of funny what I keep going back to. And I, th I think we'll get to that. But I've owned every one of these along the way, like every one of them that you have pictured here at some point in time. I've obviously had a phone. I've had a mirrorless camera. I've had a video camera. Um, I've messed with 3D cameras like it's there's a bunch of stuff that goes into that. So yep. the first one, though, and this is um, I'll I'll let you talk about this one for a second here, but smartphones and tablets. 
And that is a number yeah. one in terms of your arsenal and your tool belt uh, when it comes to creating video. Um, and Craig, you know, talk to the folks about it for a second because smartphones have come so far in the last handful of years from what they were. They are yeah. as good, if not better, um, than other even regular cameras that you're going to use. And I agree with that. And the, the I always say that the the cameras that are now being built into really good, like the high end uh, smartphones and tablets now, um, are right up there when it comes to photo quality. Now, are they up there with video quality? Probably not so much. Um, and the it's the kind of the pros and the cons is it's convenient. It's always with you. Like you're already going to have a phone in your pocket or pocketbook. Um, but you know that might save you some money, but when it comes to video, the cameras, in my opinion, are still not there quality-wise for video. Yeah. They're there for photos, not video. Uh, and then the biggest issue you have with a mobile device is you absolutely need to invest in a bunch of accessories if you want to use it professionally. Yep. I mean, it, you know, from the shakiness, from the lighting, from the microphone, everything, you got to get all the, the accessories when you use a smartphone or a tablet. So one thing um, I'll and mention, then the other though, thing, Craig, is oh, go ahead. I just, I, I'll just say for, for one second, and not to, to disagree per se, but I also think a lot of it has to do with what type of videos that you're, uh, you're shooting. Um, Correct. I agree with that. Because, okay, so... Some of the, and we covered this last week in the workshop when we talked about there are all sorts of different styles and types of video content that's doing very well out there. Uh, and it, there's yep. a wide variety from short videos that are five to 60 seconds all the way up to 45 minutes, hour long videos that are hosted on YouTube and all of which are getting huge amounts of watch time depending on the, the types of content that you're doing. So if you haven't um, checked that out, definitely check out that workshop. But one thing I will say about using your smartphone to capture video is that I think depending on the type of video we're talking about, smartphones are perfectly fine. Like, the, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. especially the sub 60 second videos yes. that are out there, especially the vertical um, positioned videos that are out there that you're seeing. If you're trying to create that sort of content, you're not going to want. Um, a more professional camera or anything more than your phone to do something like that. You might want some of the accessories uh, that Craig and I are going to talk about later in this and, and the phone accessories that you can add on to it. But you're probably not going to need a DSLR or a mirrorless camera or one of those things to do sub 60 second videos if that's the style yes. of content. 100% agree. Because people want authentic. And if you're doing something on the flyer for faster social media or a short little video. Yep. Yeah, it's better, it's yeah. better to take the time and do it than pulling out a whole professional kit. 100% agree with that. Absolutely. And then um, if you're doing something that is a little bit more in-depth, maybe a walkthrough of a home, right? Or video of certain sections of a home or the property or things of that nature, then it might be a better idea to step things up um, a little bit and move on from, say, a smartphone or tablet cameras, particularly smartphone cameras, um, up and something better than that. Anything else you want to add to smartphones before we move on into something um, a little no, more No, I think I mean, well, the, the, other thing that, the other thing that I'll kind of throw in, and I said I just want to make sure I explain it better, is when I say a newer, more modern one, I mean, if you're still holding on to an iPhone 7, don't think you're going to get the same photo or video quality as an iPhone 12. You know what yep. I mean? Like, you do, the cameras improve greatly every single year, so... When we're talking about using a phone, using a tablet to do a professional shot, again, not just a short little quick video for social media or something like that, but if you're really trying to create polished video, you can't get away with keeping on to a several-year-old phone. Right. Absolutely. You're 100% correct, Craig. And, and I'll add to that and just say that um, when you're looking for cameras when it comes to phones, there are three that always seem to stand out. Uh, from the pack, from what I see. The iPhones are great. Um, iPhone cameras mm -hmm. are super duper uh, good quality. And like Craig said, as long as they're within the last year to two years, maybe old, um, those cameras are, are fantastic and do a very good job. The other two on the Android side are either the Google Pixel or the Samsung yep. phones. 
Um, the Google yeah. Pixel and the Samsung phones, again, are just, they seem to be a notch above the rest uh, when it comes to high quality cameras. And if you're looking for a, a phone in particular to shoot good quality video uh, or photos, those are the three that would be my recommendation to look at just from my experience of, of messing with them. Any, yep. uh, any others, Craig, that beyond those? I, I, I haven't it, personally tested it because I, I don't, you, you rarely see them in the wild. Um, but one that gets rated up there with those though is the one plus, um, oh, yeah. which is huge over in Asia, but you, you can find it. It's just hard to find here. Yeah. And the support for it isn't quite there. And there, I think there's right. some downsides in North America to, to be, yep. uh, to using that in, but I get you. Yeah. Yeah. It, the but ratings on actual varied. quality are, are there for sure. All right. So um, go back here and we'll dive from smartphones and tablet cameras into digital camera or camcorder video. Um, and I know you have a little more experience with these than I do, Craig. I tend to be more in the DSLR and mirrorless world um, for the professional camera stuff that I mess with. So I'm going to let you uh, talk a little bit about the you know digital camera or just the camcorders and, and where those are at these days. I don't know if I have a lot more experience with them. What I will always say is when you're buying either a digital camera or a camcorder, you're getting one or the other. In other words, a digital camera has very, very high quality photos and then pretty average quality video. You get a camcorder, it's a dedicated video camera, so you're getting a high quality video and then average on the photo side. So you're kind of buying one or the other. So I don't really recommend going this route unless it's just convenient for you to have one of these devices with you for something. But I usually recommend if you're gonna go, if you wanna get high quality out of both, then you step up to the DSLR. Yep, I'd agree. You're the only one that I would say, uh, and, and it's interesting because they might be in the DSLR world. Um, and I'll just kind of dump over to that. But one of the ones that I think bridges the gap these days pretty the well is the GoPro. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, the the hey, GoPro, GoPro does excellent. a really good job of being both a high quality video camera as well as a um, just regular camera. Uh, so, and I've messed around with that a little bit, but I've seen a, a ton of incredible footage um, that has been taken with uh, that as well. Agreed. And especially some of the newer GoPro models actually have an onboard like uh, lens where you could see what you're shooting. Mm -hmm. Um, because that was some of the problem with some of the earlier GoPros is you could only use like the app on your mobile device to see what you were taking a picture or video of. And in the real estate world, sometimes you really want to see exactly through that lens, what you're shooting. Um, so the, some of the newer models of GoPros have that, and it is, those are kind of the exception. They, they are high quality across the board. Yep. Agreed. So DSLR cameras. Um, I know I mess with these a little bit. Um, I have a, a Sony it's a mirrorless, but technically it's still a DSLR um, in terms of how they, and we'll talk a little bit about the difference between those, but not a ton. Um, but these are your typical, DSLR cameras are like your typical Nikon, Canon, Sony, um, high-end, probably going to cost you 700 bucks yeah. at, a, at a bare minimum. Um, and that's without all the extra gear and like yeah. all the extra stuff that goes with it. You, like, you can get out the door with a decent Canon in like the seven, seven fifty range, but depending on what you're doing, that might not be the best option in terms of the camera and, and what you're buying out there. Um, what do you recommend to folks with DSLRs? Um, I mean, I've got a couple models here. I mean, well, one thing is the, now you're stepping up in high quality, everything, but the learning curve is much higher because you got to buy special lenses. You have to learn all the different settings for lenses. And I mean, if you're a professional photographer, videographer, they're typically using DSLRs. Um, so again, this, the learning curve is a step up, but that's what you're looking for. If you really want to do like Alex talked about, not little short little videos for social media, but if you're really trying to create um, high grade looking 4k video for your property, commercials, whatever it is, you're probably wanting to look into a DSLR. Yep, absolutely. So, um, they're, they're great cameras. Uh, again, if you're up for the learning curve and it is something that you want to mess with, check them out. Um, but understand these are not an inexpensive item. They are. You no, you can buy some lenses that are $2,500 lenses. Yes, just I mean, lenses. Great. Right. Um, yep. yeah. And, and even the, the better, 
I mean, I'll say, and even the better cameras, like at this point, if you want to play with the professionals, you're talking a couple grand for a good yep. DSLR or mirrorless camera. And I guess we should have done these in a different order. So I'm just going to uh, jump right over to DSLR with a mirrorless lens. Okay. And what a mirrorless lens is, and, and just to give you an explanation of this, for those folks who, who don't sort of know the internals of a camera, in, a, in an old style DSLR, there's a little mirror inside that actually has to be slightly adjusted and changed um, to bring the camera into focus and to capture photography the way that we have seen it for years. Uh, about well, was it five, six years ago? Um, I believe it was Sony that came out with it first, but the, it, they started creating what are called mirrorless cameras, where there is no period in time that the mirror, that there is a mirror moving. Um, it is, everything is totally solid state. And when the light shifts, when somebody moves, when whatever it is, the quality is a lot better, uh, and it adjusts a lot quicker. So if you are out there looking for a DSLR camera, my personal recommendation would be to make sure that you get a mirrorless camera. Um, they just tend to be better quality. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive at this point just because it is newer technology, but you're still going to be in the same ballpark uh, as the others. So you're really not um, that far out from some of the other you know, expense and quality if you are looking to go uh, in that range. Um, yeah, and let me throw in one other detail. Um, be, Alex talked about the speed and everything it does. If you are in any way intending to use your camera as a potential streaming device for the internet, you always want to go mirrorless um, because yep. with streaming, you want that very quick kind of a uh, processing power. Absolutely, you're absolutely right, Craig. You uh, the mirrorless cameras make it a lot easier to stream and to hook up. That's one thing I'm going to mention too with a DSLR um, is that. Don't assume that the DSLR that you're purchasing is good for streaming. Even if it's good for video, even if it's good, you know, at taking pictures and doing both, that doesn't mean it's going to be a great streaming camera that you can hook up and join a Zoom and, and have great quality video. So some of them are. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of them are. There's a, a few. Is it the Canon A4 that is incredible? Um, there's a few that are kind of made for this to be both, um, but just don't assume that what you're purchasing is going to be both when you do that. Now, and, and I'll just out there, if you have a camera that's more than three years old, the odds are it's not made it's for not. streaming. Like no, it's not. I'm actually very sad because I bought uh, I bought the very first year of mirrorless Sony cameras. Um, yep. and that is the year that has not been updated to, to support <laughs> any of the streaming or any of that sort of stuff. So I ended up buying a different camera that you see me on today, but I like, I think the quality of the one I've got now is pretty good these days. Um, actually, let me know. What do you think of the quality of, uh, of my camera? I'll, I'll even go full, ooh, full screen for everybody. Hi. Um, pretty good quality, right? All right. That's enough of that. So, uh, wow, I, we lost two viewers just from doing that. That's great. I don't, Good job. I, will full, I went full screen for like half a second. They had to see my face. And they were like, no, I'm gone. I'm out. Goodbye. Um, all right. Full screen again. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so, you know, Craig, one other type of camera that we mentioned here, um, and I know you brought this up, is the uh, Ricoh camera, the, the Theta yes. Z1 and what it can do. I'd love for you to explain a little bit more about this as well. So the, the Z1 is a tiny little stick camera. I mean, it's smaller than like a TV remote or whatever you want to use compared in size. It's a small little camera, uh, but that small little camera can do pretty decent quality photos, videos, uh, 360 virtual tours, because you can put it on a tripod, it'll spin around. It even does measuring, creating floor plants on the same camera. So it's not like you're going to create an entire cinematic video out of the Rico camera, uh, but maybe you're going to shoot some footage of each room and then go back to a video software and stitch it together. Yep. Um, but again, that tiny little camera, it's kind of, I always say it's kind of dummy proof. So if you don't want to kind of go the lengths of learning how to DSLR or anything like that, 
this might be a good entry level camera for you to use because again, it does photo, video, 360 virtual tour, and even floor plans. Yep. It's very good for yeah. what it does, Craig. I, I'll totally agree with you there. I think it's um, for 3D tours, for some home pictures, for things like that. I always tend to think when you're really getting into taking pictures of the home, um, maybe not in the market that we're in right right now, just because it's, I don't know, so hot. So but I tend to recommend <laughs> hiring somebody or having a professional do um, photos for most listings out there. I just tend to think you get a better, uh, quality and a better, um, you know, a better job out of it, better job for your customers by getting a, a professional to do it. So, all right, all right. So let's talk about the last, um, the last set here. We talked a little bit about streaming cameras and we'll talk more about that. And then we're going to get into some of the accessories and, um, you know, other things that go along with cameras, but Let's talk for a second about uh, webcams, because you have one of these, right? You've got the Brio, and I've got the Aver Media, or do you have the Aver still? Well, no. If you remember, I had the Brio, uh, and it had all kinds of Mac compatibility issues. So based on your recommendation, I ditched the Brio and went with the Aver Media. I've been happy ever since. Awesome. Um, and by the way, we're not saying the Brio is not a good camera. It's a fantastic camera. Mm -hmm. But big warning, if you're a Mac person... I mean, they have not updated for Mac in over six months. I mean, the most recent version of Mac came out, I think, in November. And Logitech still hasn't updated their cameras to work with the newest level of Mac. So uh, just be aware of that. When yep. you're buying a camera, you've got to make sure it's compatible with what you have. So the Logitech cameras are great cameras. They're, the high, they're some of the highest rated cameras on the market. But I flat out could not use it. After dealing with them for two months in support, I just got rid of it. Well, that sounds like a good lesson. Um, I have a an old Logitech C920. It's not high def. It's probably four or five years old at this point as well. But I also have an Avermedia. So my uh, C920 is, is uh, here, I'll point over there. So my C920 is over here pointing out um, towards the whiteboard for those style videos when I need to do those. And then I have my main camera here that you can all see. Um, and this for both Craig and myself is this Avermedia, uh, 513. For those folks that don't know, Avermedia is becoming a really big player in the video game streaming world. They uh, provide a ton of tools and are a huge, 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 uh, multi-billion dollar company. So it's not like they're a little startup or something like that that you have to worry about. They are a huge, uh, electronics company. They do and some incredible job with with streaming stuff and they've started extending into other things into microphones into stream cameras into things like that i came across this i was looking for a new stream camera myself um and i saw a bunch of you know looking at reviews looking at things online ended up picking up this uh stream cam uh 513 and have loved it ever since um recommended it to craig he's loved it so okay. we've it's um, great. i mean if you just look at the construction of it i mean it is like yeah, it's so much more compact and built better than the other webcams. I mean, it's it's much more powerful. Yep, it awesome. really is. It really is. It's uh way as you see here. It just the build on it is a lot nicer. It's got the automatic flip down, um, so you can block the camera. You don't have to buy one of those separate, and the quality just tends to be a lot better. Now the setup. It at times can be a little bit trickier than some of the other cameras that are out there. It is not quite as plug and play, although it's pretty good um, about that. So it might take a tiny bit more to set up. It's also less expensive uh, than the Log in the comparable Logitech camera. So it's less money. Um, people all over YouTube, as well as ourselves, tend to think it is a better quality um, camera. And uh, it works well for us. So... All right, so Craig, you want to talk for just a second about drone cameras before we dive into all the accessories? Yeah, I mean, drone is that next level. I mean, uh, first of all, you never want to use your own drone without an FAA license. You have to go through the process of getting a license. Um, and if you're going to hire anybody, you should also demand to see their license because let's say you hire a photographer, they do drone work for you without a license. You're the one that gets fined, not them. That's a $10,000 fine. And if they violated any spare airspace law, such as going over a military base or anything like that, it's even possible jail time for you, not them. So if you're going to 
hire anybody, demand to see their license. If you're going to try to use it commercially, you need to get your license as well. But a drone, I mean, it gives the potential buyer such a different experience than a bunch of photos of, from the ground. It really does. Um, so to me, that's kind of that next level. I always say if you do a drone on the outside and maybe something like a gimbal, an accessory we're going to talk about on the inside, it kind of gives that perfect marriage to really create a great video of a property. Absolutely. Well, that's a great segue into accessories, Craig, and we might as well just dive in um, and start talking a little bit about accessories because there are a ton of different <laughs> add-ons, accessories, things you can add to your phone and other devices to really make sure that it is a professional quality and a, a you know very good looking video. And you pretty much nailed it at the beginning when you talked about things people don't put up with. That's what these accessories really address. So. Yep. Kind of starting off with, I mean, if you go to the first category, um, which is stabilizers, it? right? Stabilizers, that shakiness and bounciness. So if you're going to be in a set in one set place, you can buy tripods. If you want to move around, they sell uh, monopods or selfie sticks. But if you're really going to move around and want natural movement when you're shooting a video, you might want to go to the next level. It's called a gimbal. So gimbals are not very expensive. The ones that use your own phone as the camera are to be in the $150 range. The ones that have a built-in camera, so you don't have to use your phone, are usually more in the 250 range. But you're not talking about a huge amount of money, but gimbals, they're what called handheld stabilizers. You could literally run in place with a gimbal in your hand, like this is an example of mine right here. I've got a couple of them. But I could run in place, and that video would still be perfectly solid without bouncing. Okay. So yeah, you don't have to invest a lot of money, but it really does help you move around and be natural in your movement. Yep. Now, one thing I will mention is before you, and, and I do want to mention to everybody here, is before you dive in and start purchasing a gimbal, before you start purchasing a lot of these accessories that we're talking about today, get on some sort of routine that you are doing video consistently, even if it's not great quality video, Okay. Um, I do video every single week and have for years now. But if you go mm -hmm. back through my catalog, or if you go back through Craig's catalog of years and years and years of us doing video, we didn't start with the highest quality cameras. We didn't start with the nicest microphones. We didn't start with gimbals. We didn't start with all of these things. We started with what we had available to us, um, and we built from there. We said, oh, I'd really like to... Now that I'm doing this consistently, I'd really like to improve this one aspect. Okay, what do I need for that? And we go out and we do that one thing. So just be wary that you want to get into some sort of routine um, and start getting into video before you go out and you buy all these accessories that we're talking about. All right. All right. So let's uh, go back in here because we talked about gimbals. The next one we want to talk about is lighting. Um, there yeah. are a few different options when it comes to lighting. This can be anything from uh, standalone uh, lights that go on the top of your computer um, to lights that you add onto your phone to give a better quality lighting than just, you know, yep. if you're out there creating those phone shots. Um, Craig, are there any that you really like or that, that stand out for you? Well, I'll put it this way. I've messed around with so many different lighting options, um, you know, just to make my home studio better and for moving around. And without a doubt, the company I've settled on across the board, when, not just for lighting, they're going to pop up a couple more times in accessories, um, is Elgato. I mean, mm. Elgato just makes such high quality lights. Uh, and they make, again, we're gonna, we're, I'm going to give them in a little bit when we get into green screens, all that kind of stuff. But they sell ring lights that are meant to, you either put a camera in the middle of them, and yep. that way your face is presented properly. They sell what are called key lights, which are kind of like the bigger lights you could use for your background uh, lighting. I mean, but they're, the quality of build of their lights, to me, is just better than everybody else out there. Yeah, for sure. So, and just something to mention to everybody. So, the, the two companies that are really going head-to-head -head right now uh, that we're talking about are Avermedia and Elgato. They produce yep. a lot of the same equipment when it comes to streaming, lighting, microphones, cameras, um, all of that sort of stuff across the board. So, and they're both great. They're, I've gotten product, I have products from both. Um, they're both great companies. So I'm right there with you, Craig. They are a great, great, uh, company when it comes to ring lights in general. 
Um, I have a, a big 19 inch uh, ring light over my uh, computer here that I use right along with my camera. So I won't scare anybody too much here, but uh, right. Um, Craig, I know you have lighting set up in your office as well. Yeah. So I have we're, we're both. ring light, key lights, and that's pretty much my studio setup. I felt like you were landing an airplane. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So as we said, lighting is hugely important um, when it comes to creating good quality video. When you are looking to create great video, make sure that lighting is something you have in mind. You might need to add lighting to what you're doing. Um, and some great options for that are either the uh, Elgato ring lights. Um, there are some interesting options on Amazon as well. Just make sure that they have the same range and quality and that sort of stuff. But these are great options from what Craig was recommending uh, and I use as well. Um, the next one, though, we're going to get into is audio quality. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because I think there are a few different items here that uh, that we can talk about. So the first and, and funny enough, I have a handful of the first of these on my desk. So there's that Yeti mic uh, that we're talking about, that first one that you see here. Um, I have it on a, a boom arm. Um, but as you also see, I have a lavalier microphone uh, on my shirt that handles a lot of the audio for um, for what we're doing. You can also add microphones directly onto um, a phone where they clip on or clip into one of the ports on your phone and then use a microphone from there. Some of those are really good. Others of those are not quite as good. Um, Craig, I don't know if you want to mention what you like and what you use for those as well. Yeah, well, I mean, the main thing is, I don't care what camera you're using, the audio receptors in almost every device in the market is pretty bad. So you always got to invest in some kind of a microphone, uh, whether it be that clip on, whether it be the boom mic that goes on top, or if you are going to be more in your office setup, using like a desktop mic like a Yeti. Uh, now, I use Yeti, IB Yeti X um, for my desktop. I mean, I have a clip-on uh, that I have from Zenheimer. I mean, like, there's a lot of great different mics out there. Uh, and you're not talking about breaking the budget, but audio quality is another item that people don't put up with, but poor quality. Yep. So one other mic um, while we're talking about lavaliers here, Craig, that I'm going to show, and I think you bought one of these too. Um, I got this on Amazon. This is a... Fifine, F-I-F-I-N-E, and it is a wireless lavalier microphone. So if I'm uh, if I'm in my office, I like using this lavalier. Um, it's hooked directly to my computer. There's no wireless. There's no extra. There's no batteries. All that stuff to deal with. It's plugged right in. I really like that a lot. However, if I'm out um, doing video with my phone. Or if I'm out at a conference or things like that, I really like bringing this um, wireless mic. And the way it works is there's a little adapter. It's a USB adapter. So you can plug this into your computer. There's a, an adapter you can plug into phones. So you can go USB to a little adapter into either a, an iPhone um, or an Android phone with, uh, with USB-C. And it is just a little wireless mic that you can take anywhere with you and not have to be tethered to your phone. So you can set up your phone on a tripod somewhere um, and still have some pretty decent audio uh, without having to run wires and, and handle all that sort of stuff. So um, it was pretty inexpensive too. I want to say it was like 30 bucks. Um, it really was not a ton of money though. So just a recommendation if you are looking for uh, wireless mics uh, or, or wireless wired mics. <laughs> Um, all right, so now let's dive in and talk a little bit more about the uh, desk mics and the things that you might use for streaming. Um, Craig, you mentioned the Elgato before, so as well as the Yeti X. I have a, a Yeti Blue um, that I've had for years now and is still one of the gold standards out there. Um, what of these do you recommend? What do you like? Well, the, I, I own a Yeti X, and the, and the X is just uh, it's kind of like the premium model of the Blue. So it's just like the the top one you can buy. So I think the regular Yeti is uh, 150 and the Yeti X is 250. Mm -hmm. It just has a little bit better um, range and, you know, you can uh, 
use it in different settings and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, anything you get from Blue, um, which is excellent. Uh, and yeah. by the way, I'm pretty sure Blue is a part of Logitech, I believe. Um, so it's it, it's just a different division, but they really specialize in excellent microphones. Awesome. Yeah, I love both of those. Um, I really like my Blue uh, Yeti as well. The only thing I will say is I find that myself included, when we're on uh, video calls, we have a tendency to wander where we're leaning forward, we're leaning back, we're moving around. And desk mics that either stand right in front of you or are on a boom arm or something like that, they work really, really well when you are a certain distance from them. And it's very hard for it to figure out the uh, volume for you. If you start moving a foot away and a foot back um, and all that sort of stuff. So I will say that if you are going to use um, one of these, if you are going to use one of these microphones, just be mindful of that when you are using it on your desk. That's why I tend to use one of these, one of the lavalier mics is I really like that I don't have to worry about moving around, stuff on my desk, anything like that. Um, it, I, get, I feel like I have a little bit more freedom with that. So, Craig, I will let you take the last section here on green screens, because I know this is something you mess with a little bit more than I do. Um, I yep. have my backdrop as my office, uh, as folks can see, but I know you mess with a green screen on a daily basis. So I'm going to let you cover this part. Well, let me put it this way. I used to have, a, and I still have it. I literally gave it away to my wife, like a full green screen setup like this up on the screen. Uh, and we're just showing you here as it's available and it's pretty inexpensive. Like I bought that entire setup on Amazon for $150. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where you had the huge backdrop, you had the lighting kits, you had the booms, all of that for $150. Um, I've over time realized, I mean, one, in my new home, I don't have as much studio space as I wanted to use a huge backdrop. And the only way I used the big backdrop in my old house was I literally had to, when the kids weren't home, set it up and break it down. It was a pain in the butt. Okay. But if you go to the next slide, what I've honestly moved to is just more of a backdrop like you're talking about. Because so much over the last year or two, especially since everyone's Zooming now, there's so much good stuff available just for quick little backdrops. In fact, I have the one on the right, what's called the green screen MT from Elgato, which is like a pull down, like almost like a grit, like a movie screen. I can pull up and pull down anytime I want to use it. So that's what's actually behind me right now. Uh, but the quality of this thing, like the previous slide was like a cloth material. And anytime I got any wrinkles or anything like that, it, it messed up your green screen. But these, uh, the ones that Elgato makes are like more of a, it's not a fabric. It's more like a, um, a, a, a tougher material that will not wrinkle and you won't have any of those issues. Yep. The one thing I will uh, mention to folks to be careful of in terms of purchasing is um, there are some folks who, let me back up a second here, okay? One, if you have a good backdrop that you are comfortable with, it is better than green screen, hands down. All of the testing out there says it, all of the, like, what people prefer, et cetera. If you have the space to have, uh, like, for me, I have happened to have this for this office. I had one for my last office that wasn't quite as good, I don't think, as my setup here. It was bigger office, but just not quite as great for camera um, and for camera work. So it's interesting, though, because when you look at it, it people tend to prefer a real backdrop when you can do it. Um, but mm -hmm. so don't feel like you need to run out and do green screen because it's a, another amount of work and another hassle. The other thing I'll mention with green screen is there are these products that, and they're not terrible. I'm not naysaying here, but there are these products that have you seen them, Craig, they hook to the back of your chair. Oh yeah. They're, they don't work well. And they, and they like have a green, whatever around here from that are hooked to the back of their chair. Those don't, don't tend to work well. And they don't tend to work well for a number of reasons. One um, is the same reason the microphone we were talking about before where you move a little bit. Every time you move your chair, 
the lighting changes against the backdrop, which means you have the lighting on your computer and the software that's trying to figure out uh, what green to replace uh, has to figure out something new as well. So it just, uh, they're not great. If you are, re if you have a very stationary, et cetera spot, they can work in certain circumstances, but my experience has been they are not great uh, and not necessarily the best thing to go spend your money on. Um, all right. Great. And then last but not least here, you want to talk a little bit about the app. I know you use this as well. Um, green screener. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the only tricky part about doing green screen work, honestly, is figure out where do you set up your lights? Um, where do you position them? Where do you put them in the room? Stuff like that. Um, and what this little $10 app does is you just point the app at your beans, a green screen background, and then it shows you with heat mapping where your lights are right and wrong. So it kind of takes that tricky part of green screen work out of it by figuring out where to put your lights. Yep. yep. Definitely a helpful app. Um, if you are ever yep. interested in setting up a green screen, uh, and you know, that being said, there are a ton of apps out there when it comes to editing, um, creating the video, all that sort of stuff. And we're not going to cover that today. Um, nah. This is, and I'll just show you a quick overview of all the different software that's out there that you could use uh, to create video. But the reason we are not covering this today is we have a masterclass uh, coming up next week. Um, that is on 6.3. We are, it is the video, uh, real estate video masterclass. We are covering everything. We are covering um, video content that works well and that you want to do. We're giving you a bunch of videos and um, uh, types of videos and video ideas that you can use immediately. We're going into video editing uh, and showing you how to easily edit your videos. Um, so check that out. Uh, are folks interested? Also, I didn't see Terry in chat. Hello, Terry. Good to see you. From Tonto Basin, Arizona. Lovely to see you here. Derek says, great tip on the green screen app for lighting. Thank you so much, Derek. We appreciate it. Um, all right. Do you want to, uh, Craig, do you mind throwing the, I can do it too here, um, the link in chat for the masterclass coming up? And let me sure. just ask, is, is anyone either already signed up uh, or interested in that masterclass? Um, let us know in chat if you are uh, if you sign up today, you can save a little bit of money. Um, prices go up tomorrow. Uh, we want to give people a little incentive for, for joining early and for locking that in. So Craig's going to post that in chat here in a sec. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. Terry's saying she's very interested. I'm new to real estate and need to build my business. Well, video is an amazing way to video do it. Video is an amazing way to do it. Actually, you know what, Craig? I'm going to, I'm going to go on the rant for a second here. Okay. We talked about this at the beginning, um, when it comes to video and doing video and the power of video and why aren't people more interested in video? Because, and we get to see it. We get to see how many people read our emails and show up for classes and all that sort of stuff for things like Canva. And then how many people are, same people are interested in things like video or other content. And it always blows me away that more people are not interested in including video in what they're doing in their practice. Um, it has taken some time to, uh, I guess, get adoption. And I don't think it's been nearly adopted to the level of the opportunity that is out there when it comes to creating video. Now we can go and talk all day about the stats when it comes to the amount of engagement that people get um, on videos compared to other types of social posts, other types of social media, to other types of all those sorts of things. But one thing that um, that I, I think it's really, really interesting is that you start looking at some of the things that you can outsource versus some of the things that maybe you can't outsource. And we look at things like, say, Canva, right? Canva is a great tool. We love teaching people how to use it. It can be incredibly helpful in your business. But can you outsource design work? Can you have somebody else take that over in your business? Absolutely. But let me ask you this. 
can you have somebody else shoot your videos for you and be on camera as you? Nope. No matter what you do, you will never outsource you as a person getting on camera. Can't happen. And I just want you to keep that perspective. Um, when it comes to creating video and the types of tools that you're using in your business. Um, so, you know what? Let's, so Terry, uh, Derek says, Terry, check out SFL if you haven't already. I wish I started it earlier in my career. And Terry says, what is SFL? So SFL is service for life. And I'll put the, the, uh, link, um, uh, right here in chat. Um, it is a newsletter as well as a, a direct marketing service that you can use to follow up with your friends, your family, your sphere, your past colleagues, um, all of those sorts of folks on a monthly basis to uh, get repeat and referral business consistently. So um, Derek is someone who uses Service for Life uh, and gets, well, I'll let him tell you the referrals and all that sort of stuff that he gets from it. But um, Derek has been a client uh, almost two years now, I would say. It's been about two years now um, that he's been with us at Service for Life. And actually, I should mention um, Service for Life is one of the groups that is presenting this to you today. So we put two links in chat there, one of which is serviceforlife.com. The other is the Real Estate Technology Institute. Uh, those are the two groups that are sponsoring this and sponsor all of these workshops um, is Service for Life uh, that uh, Derek had mentioned, SFL, um, as well as the Real Estate Technology Institute, which is, if you are interested in learning anything about technology, definitely check out, uh, or marketing really, uh, check out reti.us. Um, but if you're interested in building business, uh, growing from your past clients, your repeat business, your referral business, people sending you business, your friends, your family, uh, your past colleagues, all of those folks sending you business consistently, definitely check out Service for Life. I love it. I love seeing that. Derek says it works better than any other marketing I've done to my sphere. How cool is that, Craig? I love oh, seeing I really stuff do. like that. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, um, I guess let me uh, uh, let me ask, are there any questions? about anything we covered today, um, about the masterclass that is coming up next week and what we are covering there. Uh, anything of the sort is, are there any questions that we can answer for folks before we close this down today? And while we're waiting on questions, is there anything you want to add, Craig? No, I mean, the main thing is, and you and I were joking about this before, it, whatever reason you're not creating video, get over it, because yeah. it's the most dominant thing in the marketing world right now, and every realtor has a reason they're not doing it. So. We always say, just, you know, whatever's holding you back, try to get over that and start generating video. Absolutely. I promise you the response to your video will be better than you think it is. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, I don't see any questions um, in chat at this point. Um, if you do, just post them right here. We are always active in our group and checking stuff out. Um, we really appreciate everybody's time today. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope you have learned some, you know, interesting tips and tricks today. Uh, some of the gear and gadgets that you uh, might want to get or maybe want to stay away from. Hopefully we saved you some money along the way. All right. All Sounds right. Good. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We're going to close it down. Uh, as always, Craig, thank you um, so much. My good friend, Craig Grant from the Real Estate Technology Institute, Institute for joining us. Uh, my name is uh, Alex Camilio, sorry. CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. And uh, we'll see you next week.